in mathematics and computational geometry. A de Lune triangulation for a set P of points in a plane is a triangulation dt such that no point in P is inside the circumcircle of any triangle in dt. De Lune triangulations maximize the minimum angle of all the angles of the triangles in the triangulation. They tend to avoid skinny triangles. The triangulation is named after Boris de Lune for his work on this topic from 1934. For a set of points on the same line there is no de Lune triangulation. For four or more points on the same circle the de Lune triangulation is not unique. Each of the two possible triangulations that split the quadrangle into two triangles satisfies the de Lune condition, i.e., the requirement that the circumcircles of all triangles have empty interiors. By considering circumscribed spheres, the notion of de Lune triangulation extends to three and higher dimensions. Generalizations are possible to metrics other than Euclidean. However in these cases a de Lune triangulation is not guaranteed to exist or be unique. Relationship with the Voronoi diagram. The de Lune triangulation of a discrete point set P in general position corresponds to the dual graph of the Voronoi diagram for P. Special cases include the existence of three points on a line and four points on circle. The de Lune triangulation with all the circumcircles and their centers. Connecting the centers of the circumcircles produces the Voronoi diagram. D dimensional de Lune. For a set P of points in the Euclidean space, a de Lune triangulation is a triangulation dt such that no point in P is inside the circumhypersphere of any simplex in dt. It is known that there exists a unique de Lune triangulation for P if P is a set of points in general position, that is, the affine hull of P is d-dimensional and no set of d plus two points in P lie on the boundary of a ball whose interior does not intersect P. The problem of finding the de Lune triangulation of a set of points in d-dimensional Euclidean space can be converted to the problem of finding the convex hull of a set of points in dimensional space. By giving each point P an extra coordinate equal to P2, taking the bottom side of the convex hull, and mapping back to d-dimensional space by deleting the last coordinate. As the convex hull is unique, so is the triangulation. Assuming all facets of the convex hull are simplices, non-simplicial facets only occur when d plus two of the original points lie on the same d hypersphere i.e the points are not in general position properties let n be the number of points and d the number of dimensions the union of all simplices in the triangulation is the convex hull of the points the de Lune triangulation contains those simplices in the plane, if there are b vertices on the convex hull, then any triangulation of the points has at most two n minus two minus b triangles, plus one exterior face. In the plane, each vertex has on average six surrounding triangles. In the plane, the de Lune triangulation maximizes the minimum angle, compared to any other triangulation of the points. The smallest angle in the de Lune triangulation is at least as large as the smallest angle in any other. However, the de Lune triangulation does not necessarily minimize the maximum angle. The de Lune triangulation also does not necessarily minimize the length of the edges. A circle circumscribing any de Lune triangle does not contain any other input points in its interior. If a circle passing through two of the input points doesn't contain any other of them in its interior, then the segment connecting the two points is an edge of a de Lune triangulation of the given points. Each triangle of the de Lune triangulation of a set of points in d-dimensional spaces corresponds to a facet of convex hull of the projection of the points onto a dimensional paraboloid, and vice versa. The closest neighbor B to any point P is on an edge BP in the de Lune triangulation since the nearest neighbor graph is a subgraph of the de Lune triangulation. The de Lune triangulation is a geometric spanner. 
The shortest path between two vertices, along the lunar edges, is known to be no longer than times the Euclidean distance between them. Visual de Lune definition. Flipping. From the above properties an important feature arises. Looking at two triangles abdom BCD with the common edge BD, if the sum of the angles alpha and gamma is less than or equal to 180 degrees, the triangles meet the de Lune condition. This is an important property because it allows the use of a flipping technique. If two triangles do not meet the de Lune condition, switching the common edge BD for the common edge AC produces two triangles that do meet the de Lune condition. This triangulation does not meet the de Lune condition. This triangulation does not meet the de Lune condition. Flipping the common edge produces a de Lune triangulation for the four points. Algorithms. Many algorithms for computing de Lune triangulations rely on fast operations for detecting when a point is within a triangle circumcircle and an efficient data structure for storing triangles and edges. In two dimensions, one way to detect if point D lies in the circumcircle of A, B, C is to evaluate the determinant. When A, B and C are sorted in a counterclockwise order, this determinant is positive if and only if D lies inside the circumcircle. Flip algorithms as mentioned above, if a triangle is non delune we can flip one of its edges. This leads to a straightforward algorithm. Construct any triangulation of the points, and then flip edges until no triangle is non delune Unfortunately, this can take O-edge flips, and does not extend to three dimensions or higher. Incremental The most straightforward way of efficiently computing the de Lune triangulation is to repeatedly add one vertex at a time, retriangulating the affected parts of the graph. When a vertex V is added, we split in three the triangle that contains V, then we apply the flip algorithm. Done naively, this will take O time. We search through all the triangles to find the one that contains V, then we potentially flip away every triangle. Then the overall runtime is O. If we insert vertices in random order, it turns out that each insertion will flip, on average, only O triangles, although sometimes it will flip many more. This still leaves the point location time to improve. We can store the history of the splits and flips performed. Each triangle stores a pointer to the two or three triangles that replaced it. To find the triangle that contains V, we start at a root triangle and follow the point of that point to a triangle that contains V, until we find a triangle that has not yet been replaced. On average, this will also take O time. Overall vertices, then, this takes O time. While the technique extends to higher dimension, the runtime can be exponential in the dimension even if the final de Lune triangulation is small. The Boyer-Watson algorithm provides another approach for incremental construction. It gives an alternative to edge flipping for computing the de Lune triangles containing a newly inserted vertex. Divide and conquer A divide and conquer algorithm for triangulations in two dimensions is due to Lee and Schachter which was improved by Gibbason, Stolfi and later by Dwyer. In this algorithm, one recursively draws a line to split the vertices into two sets. The de Lune triangulation is computed for each set, and then the two sets are merged along the splitting line. Using some clever tricks, the merge operation can be done in time O, so the total running time is O. For certain types of point sets, such as a uniform random distribution, by intelligently picking the splitting lines the expected time can be reduced to O while still maintaining worst-case performance. A divide and conquer paradigm to performing a triangulation in D dimensions is presented in Joule. A fast divide and conquer de Lune triangulation algorithm in ED by P. Signoni, Montaigne, Scop and Yor. Divide and conquer has been shown to be the fastest DT generation technique. Sweep line fortunes algorithm uses a sweep line technique to achieve O runtime in the planar case. 
Sweefle Sweefle is a hybrid technique for 2D de Lune triangulation that uses a radially propagating sweep hull, paired with a final iterative triangle flipping step. An accurate integer arithmetic variant of the algorithm is also presented. Applications The Euclidean minimum spanning tree of a set of points is a subset of the de Lune triangulation of the same points, and this can be exploited to compute it efficiently. For modeling terrain or other objects given a set of sample points, the de Lune triangulation gives a nice set of triangles to use as polygons in the model. In particular, the de Lune triangulation avoids narrow triangles. See triangulated irregular network. De Lune triangulations can be used to determine the density or intensity of points samplings by means of the DTFE. De Lune triangulations are often used to build meshes for space discretized solvers such as the finite element method and the finite volume method of physics simulation. Because of the angle guarantee and because fast triangulation algorithms have been developed, Typically, the domain to be meshed is specified as a coarse simplicial complex. For the mesh to be numerically stable, it must be refined. For instance, by using Ruppert's algorithm, the increasing popularity of finite element method and boundary element method techniques increases the incentive to improve automatic meshing algorithms. However, all of these algorithms can create distorted and even unusable grid elements. Fortunately, several techniques exist which can take an existing mesh and improve its quality. For example, smoothing is one such method, which repositions nodal locations so as to minimize element distortion. The stretched grid method allows the generation of pseudo-regular meshes that meet the de Lune criteria easily and quickly in a one-step solution.